This video is about how to create a combo chart in Excel. What you see here in the black text is data that I downloaded directly from the Wharton Research Data Services or WORDS website. This data came from CompuStat quarterly fundamentals data. The first thing I want to show you is when you download data, you may see a series of pound signs like this. This means the data contained in that cell is too long to be viewed, so you need to widen this column. This sometimes confuses students. Simply double click on the right hand edge of that column. As I scroll to the right, you see values that are brown. I color coded this data because it's the focus of my chart. I moved price, common shares outstanding, assets and net income over to the right hand side of the data set. Using this data, I performed calculations as you see in green. For example, the formula for market capitalization is column O, which is common shares outstanding, times N, which is the price. This is the overall market value of the firm. In the formula, you can see the if error function. And what this means is that if this formula returns an error, automatically place a null value or empty value in that cell. If you look at the formula for PE, similarly, we use the if error function, but the formula is different. This is the price of the company, which is column N, divided by the earnings, which is column Q. This is known as the PE ratio, or price earnings ratio. I got a little creative also and created a price to assets ratio. This is shown in this formula, which is simply the price of the firm divided by the assets. This is the cost of assets for the firm. You can literally calculate hundreds or thousands of financial performance ratios for a company. But of course, they should make sense. For example, in the context of technology development, does the technology relate to one of these performance measures? If we don't believe it should, then we probably shouldn't include it in our analysis. Moving over to the right, I placed from the original data set the calendar date, including year and quarter. And further to the right, I standardized data. I did that because if you look at market cap, it dominates the PE and PA ratios. What we would see if we charted this was market capitalization varying over time and the PE ratio and the PA ratios would look like lines. You couldn't tell that they were varying. So because market cap dominated the other variables, we rescale all three of them to be in the form of z-scores. This is shown in this formula. Again, we use if error, and we use the standardized function to produce a z-score for this value that is R2 in this case. So the first argument in this function is the actual value we're trying to convert to z-scores. And then we use the average of the column and the standard deviation of the column. Note that I froze the row numbers in the average and standard deviation functions. What this means is as I copy down, we're always pulling the average and standard deviation from the exact same data series. Because I did not freeze the column, that means I can copy to the right and the formula will be correct. So as I copy this over to the right, Excel automatically accurately calculates the standardized value for the PE ratio and the PA ratio. Note that in the name of these standardized values, we have purposefully designated each as being a z-score. Now that we've done this, all of these variables are scaled similarly. They generally range from negative three to three with a mean of zero. I can test this by averaging like this. And as you can see, the average is near zero. This is an exponential value. What this negative 16 means is that we should move this decimal place 16 places to the left. This is close to zero. And we can quickly validate that columns W and X are also zero by copying the formula to the right, and they are. We just wanted to validate that these were indeed z-scores and they were calculated correctly. Since we believe they're correct, we can now put them all together on the same chart and they will be scaled similarly. To the right of this is uh, Y and Z. These columns contain information about product launches for Apple Corporation, which is the focus of this data set. For example, Macintosh was released in this quarter. The iPod was released in the fourth quarter of 2001. Apple TV, the first quarter of 2007, and so on. Notice to the right of each launch title, there is a launch event descriptor. This really describes the height of the line that denotes the launch event. For example, in our chart, in practice, what this means is that these variables will be represented as continuously changing variables, whereas the launch title will be a singular event having a height of this. How did we arrive at a height for this line to be eight? 
Well, we want the height of the event line to be higher than any of the continuous data on the left-hand side. So what we do is we need to know the maximum value of all the continuous variables. In Excel, we can easily access the maximum value by using the max function. At max, and include in this all three variables, close parentheses, and it is 7.56. That's the maximum z-score in all of these values. So we need our launch event line to be taller than 7.56, so I used 8. This is something that I did before recording this video, and that's why I knew that. So if I scroll down, you can see that the line height for each event will be 8. We can edit that later if we don't like the results. Notice also before we chart, we have a problem. The PE ratio has missing values for the earlier years of the company. This problem is resolved later. We also have an interesting situation where we have negative PE scores, but those can be useful. The missing values are not useful to us, so we can either impute, in other words, I can copy these values down for each year. In that case, we're really making up information, and that's not a good situation. We can also delete the entire records. That's not a good situation either. So we'll have to consider this as we build our line chart. For now, let's include PE in our chart. To build our chart, we select all of the relevant data. Press insert, select line, and there's a line chart. Excel has rapidly built a line chart for us. Let's make it bigger so that we can see it. And let's move over to the left. Let's get the chart out of the way of the launch title and launch event. There's a reason for this. Later on we're going to come and grab the names of these launch events and we will need the chart to be out of the way. I'm going to make it as big as I can so we can see it. So if you look at the chart, there are some problems here that have arrived. Number one, the text is somewhat small. And as you can see, there are six decimal places on the y-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. In addition, we can't see the events. And these labels for the x-axis are in the way of the data. That's not good either. So let's work on the chart. Let's go to the left axis, right-click on it, and go to Format Axis. As you'll see, there are different categories of properties that describe the axis. To change the number of decimal places, click number, go to decimal places, and type in zero. And you see all those decimal places went away. We also want to improve the situation where the text is too small. While selecting the y-axis, select home, change the font size as we ordinarily would do. 12 is a good font size. I like the Georgia font, so I'm going to select that and make it bold, and that looks better. Next, we're going to work on the x-axis. Again, we want Georgia font. We want 12 font size and bolded. And it's a problem that the x-axis labels are in the way of the data. So we right-click on the x-axis labels. We go to Format Axis. Go to Axis Labels here. We want our labels to be low. And as you can see, Excel moved the labels out of the way of our data. There are other things that we can do, such as clicking on an actual line and modify, right-clicking on it and formatting. We can format a data point or an entire line. So anything you have on the chart can be modified by changing its properties. Let's do this with the legend on the right-hand side. First, we want to change the font to be consistent with the rest of the chart. We want Georgia and 12 and bolded. It's easier to read. And note that we have a launch title and launch event that aren't even shown on the chart. That's a problem. We know that we included launch title and launch event in the chart because they're shown on the legend. What the chart is trying to do is represent launch title and launch event with a line. But these events are so sporadic that it's not showing up on the chart. What we need to do is change the launch event chart type to a column as shown. And as you can see, we have lines drawn for each event. The problem is we don't know what these lines are. One of them is the introduction of the iPhone, for example, and we don't really know which one that is. So we right-click on each line, and we add data label. We can do this for each one. The problem is we're not interested in the number 8, which is the height of the line. Perhaps the simplest way to change these values is to replace the 8 with the name of the launch event. For example, this one is the Macintosh. 
And of course we want to change the font so that it's readable and visible. Georgia 12. And I'll pause the video and update the rest. And when I'm done, these two labels are written over one another. To fix them, simply select on one and you can move it around just like any other object. And in this case, we have three that are so close together that what we can do is modify the height of the line. It's just an event identifier. I'll move iPad and Apple TV down and change the height of their associated event lines to six. You see that I can do that by going to their launch event column and changing those numbers from eight to six and it'll update the chart automatically. Let's go to Apple TV and iPad and do that. And now we can move the labels back up. And that looks a little cleaner. We still have the problem of the PE ratio and its missing values. Note that in the chart, when it's formatted as a line, it makes it look like the PE ratio is very volatile. It goes from above 6 to 0, then to 2 to 0, when it wasn't that volatile. So we have a decision to make. We can impute, as mentioned earlier, or we can delete the data, which would be possibly worse, or we can still represent it in a way that it doesn't confuse the user. What we need to do is differentiate this line from all others. We can do this in two ways. One is we can change the color, and the other is to change it from a line to a column. So to do this, select the line, right click on it, we'll change it to light brown. Then we'll change the chart type to column. And now we have a chart that we can interpret in different ways. We look at the events and we can see how different metrics representing value changed based on these events. And we can develop theories about what creates value in Apple. And the last thing we need to do is clear up some confusion. You can see in our legend that there are two references to launch events. One is the launch title, which references the labels, and the other is launch events, which is used to draw the line. We need to delete the launch title. Let's right click on it and delete it. And now everything that has a color in our chart is represented by our legend. I hope you found this to be useful. Thank you.